house of God this morning, don't we? Praise God. There's no one quite like our God. Praise
I shouldn't have started naming names the first time back, but but anyway, it sure is good to have everybody. Amen. We're going to ask our ushers to come at this time if they will, and uh, we're going to receive our offering. I will mention today uh, some exciting news uh, for kids, and that is that on July the 19th, we will be starting back with Kids Church. And all the parents said amen. It will be for 10 years and under, uh, down to, we won't do the toddlers and those, but regular kids' church ages up through 10. And uh, all uh, the kids will not have to have a mask, but all the workers that will be in their kids' church will be wearing a mask during service. And so anyway, we're really, really happy about that today. I want to mention also, and especially for our online uh, viewers today, uh, we, we welcome you and we say thank you for joining us today. And also, if you would like to give online, you can do that by going to our website, minafirstag.org. From there, you can go to the giving tab, and from there, you can go to various places. I'll share with everybody that you also can, through that or just through your phone right now, you can actually text to give, and the number that will be up on the screen uh, as far as for the online viewers, will be 479-333-2233. Let me say that with me, 479-333-2233. And like I say, that's for the online audience to see today, but y'all really did good on that. And, and uh, uh, Ryder, did you get that? Can Where's you repeat it back time? to me? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can give, and you can uh, you can just put in, if you want to give $20 million, just put 20 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and, and then you can put then tithe or emissions, whatever you want to do on that, and, uh, and anyway, then that comes directly through to the church. But God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Brother Mark Roth, would you pray over the offering, please, sir?
message that I believe the Lord has given me this morning speaks of, you can just remain standing, uh, speaks of uh, doers versus triers. And I've never, to my recollection, had this thought as I did just a moment ago. But it's so true that God is a doer. When you need healing, God is a doer. When you need deliverance, God is a doer. When you need to forgive, God is right there with you to be a doer. When you need joy in your heart, God is a doer. When you need peace that's beyond our understanding and comprehension, God is a doer. When you need salvation, God is a doer. When you need filled with the Holy Ghost, God is a doer. The baptism of the Spirit, God is a doer. We meet Him by faith. There's a myriad of different things that we need today. When we really have a desire to really worship, God meets us there and we become a doer of the Word. When we begin to pray, God meets us there and we become a doer of the word. Because God is first a doer. He's the one that gave us the word. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ is the word. So he's a doer. Whatever it is that you need in your life or the miracle that you need in your, your life, your family, your nation, your world, God is a doer. God is at work today in the entire world. I can pray today for India, and because God is a doer, and we are working with him by faith, God from right here in Mena, Arkansas, will touch India. So there is no situation, there is no problem that is too big for God to handle. I don't know what you came in here thinking today or burdened down with. I have no idea what family situation or what child or grandchild is in trouble today. I don't know. But you know, and then you couple your faith and you pray to God, and God being the doer, and now you are the doer also, the miracle takes place. The miracle takes place. The miracle takes place. We saw this, as a matter of fact, uh, Friday morning when we had prayer meeting here, God was just the doer that showed up because we were the doers that prayed. And I will tell you for a fact that when you pray and you have faith, God will do the work. Amen. I want everybody that's able, if you would stand today, and I, again, I don't know what you need. I don't know what you came in here needing today, but I will tell you that God is a doer. For someone here today that you are needing to forgive someone for something that maybe happened a long time ago, maybe it happened yesterday, I will tell you God will meet you there today and that miracle can take place. Because we all need to walk in freedom. We need to walk in victory. We need to walk in the blessing of God. So whatever it is that you need today, whatever it is that you need, we're going to pray and we're going to trust God. Just had this thought. We've got folks behind me here on the praise team. They go through stuff just like we go through. The folks online, they go through stuff just like we do. We're people living here on planet Earth dealing with stuff. And we're going to trust God today. We're going to trust God today. So whatever needs you have, I want you in just a moment, I want you to just reach out to God. You say, how in the world do I do that? You talk to him. You talk to him. Can you talk to a neighbor? Sure you can. Can you talk to a family member? Sure you can. Most well, certainly we can talk to our Heavenly Father. He is very, very approachable, believe it or not. He is very very approachable. So we go to 
his throne of grace today. We go with humility and we also go with boldness. And God's going to do some miracles today. God's going to do some stuff. If you need salvation today, if you need to give your heart to Jesus Christ, if you need your sins forgiven, now is the greatest opportunity that I've ever known of for you to be saved, for you to be forgiven. Amen? Whatever you need, you just ask him. Father God, we just all come to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, this audience here and also the audience online. And, and Lord God, we bring our burdens to you in this time of praise, in this time of worship. Lord God, we have come to know that sometimes there are, there are moments, there are opportunities before us where you want to do a miracle in our lives. So Lord God, in the mighty, wonderful, awesome, incredible name of Jesus Christ right now, Lord God, we just believe you, God, that you are going to do a fantastic, phenomenal work, Lord, in people's lives where there needs to be forgiveness of sin. Lord, I just ask you right now as they call out to you, as they open their heart to you, maybe they don't even understand how, but Lord God, it's simple faith that we just come to you and we say, Lord, I am a sinner and I need you to forgive me of my sin. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful in that area. Lord, for those today that need healing in their bodies, Father, I thank you today that you are there and you meet us. You are a doer. And Lord God, you do it with joy and happiness. And Lord, we respond today with faith, knowing God that you will move and you will minister. Hallelujah. Father God, for Lord, a situation today where it would seem that everything is against that person and that group. Lord God, I thank you today that you are going to bring victory into their lives. It seems like there's no hope. It seems like there's no way through this, no way to victory. But God, you cause victory to happen even when it seems like it is impossible. Father God, I thank you for that right now. Lord, I give you praise. I give you honor. All across this building today and online, we just thank you for your goodness. We give you glory. Lord God, even this praise team gives you glory today. Lord, the instruments give you glory today. God, we just thank you that you are holy, you are mighty, you are righteous, you are everything, Lord, to us. Lord God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Brother Rodney, sing that again, if you will. Church House, I want you to just, I want you to just let God know today how much you appreciate him even as we sing this song again even as we sing he is the king of glory for your life he is your victory sing this today
somebody listening today, things just seem bad. But when you have faith in God, things seem good. I said things seem good. Amen. Amen. Walk in that faith. Amen. You all appreciate Brother Tom. I do. He's never fallen off the throne. He's, he's on the throne. Uh, and uh, we had a kind of a late la uh, night last night. Uh, well, Christy and Rachel did. They spent the night in the ER in Hot Springs. And uh, I just want to ask this morning if you remember Rachel in your prayers. There was some, some health needs that. We won't go into detail about, but she, she needs a healing in her body. And just, I know that God can touch her. The, the doctors couldn't even find a normal body part on her. <laughs> but we serve a God that he's awesome, he's mighty, he created this whole world, and yet he wants to be close, like we've been singing about being in his presence, that he put us together in our mother's womb. And he knows every day of our life. He wrote it down in a book, the Bible said. He wrote every day down in a Bible. He, he knows it. He knows Rachel. He, he knows that and when, he, when he put her together, those body parts were really, they're there. But the doctors couldn't find them last night and early this morning, but they are there. And he is still in control. And you know what? When things look impossible with man, <laughs> There is nothing impossible with God, and I'm praising Him for that. Amen. Let's pray for Rachel right Let's now, Father God, today. Lord, we just ask you to touch Rachel. Father God, we give you thanks and we yes. give you praise that you are yes. almighty and you are on the throne today. So, Lord, we believe right here this morning that you will touch her body, whatever it is that she needs, in a miraculous, a very miraculous way. Yes. And God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for that in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Y'all believe that? Amen. I believe that. Amen. Amen. Turn, if you would, this morning to the book of Mark, chapter number 11. Mark, chapter number 11. It's a very exciting scripture. Uh, uh, you probably heard this scripture preached upon many, many times. I, I love it. It's good. It's encouraging. Again, it's exciting. Uh, as we talk about the authority of your words. The authority of your words. Your words have authority. And I get a witness this morning. Amen. When it comes to faith, when it comes to even walking with God. I want you to understand that faith and the principles of God work together seamlessly. Faith and the principles and the precepts of God, your faith coupled with what God said he would do, those things mesh together very perfectly and miracles are produced. And so that's what we'll get into today. It's, we're, I know we're living in a world where it seems like so many people are looking for formulas to try to make things happen. There are people even that are uh, diving into the mystical. I will share with you for a fact today that faith is not mystical. Faith is not magical. Faith is trusting in Almighty God who created you to do a work. Give him praise, if you would, as we move into the message this morning. But one of the things, one of the elements that comes into play as we're talking about the authority of words, obviously, is going to be 
the words that you speak, the words that I speak, because those words uh, have authority, those words have meaning, and we'll get into it later, but those words produce life and they produce death. So we choose in our lives life or death. Many times in our lives, that's what we choose. Before I read the text, though, this morning, I want to make two statements that I think are going to resonate with your spirit today. Number one is this, that authority is for all of God's children. Authority is for all, every one of God's children. Number two, knowledge that is acted upon brings results. When you have knowledge of the goodness of God, of the faithfulness of God, you have knowledge of God's word, of what he said he would do, and then you act upon that in faith, there will always be a result. Because God is inherently faithful. God cannot help but be faithful. That is who he is. That is part of the truth of who he is. Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. How many of you have ever heard that preached upon before or you've read that? One person in the whole church house. How many of you? Can I see your hand? Have faith in God. It's like Jesus summed everything up, even that we'll talk about today. He summed up our lives as believers when he simply made a bold declaration. He said, have faith in God in God. Now he follows that up in verse number 23 and he said for assuredly in other words there was emphasis there for assuredly I say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that these things he says will be done he will have whatever he says Therefore, verse 24, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Can I get an amen today? Amen. Verses 23 and 24 tell us that if a person says and if a person believes, and if a person does not doubt, Scripture tells us, the Bible says, that that person will have whatever he speaks. It didn't say that they already had it, but it said you will have it. Are you all with me this morning? Amen? So we're talking about the authority of your words. Your words make a difference. We'll talk a lot today about positive and negative and encouraging and discouraging and things like that. But so many people just don't realize the power in their words. And then I met a few folks that used to know it and then somewhere along the line they forgot the authority and the power that's found in their words. They may quote scripture every once in a while. Are y'all with me today? But they don't live it out in day-to-day -day life. I will tell you for a fact that you and I as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to be walking this thing out with faith. We need to be trusting God and seeing his word fulfilled in our lives every single day. Give him praise again, if you will, this morning. Amen. Sometimes I, I, I almost think we forget, though, that through our words, there is victory, and sometimes there is defeat. Through our words, there's sometimes cursing, and sometimes there is blessing. It depends upon what we say. Sometimes our words put us over. Sometimes our words put us under. Amen, somebody. I have noticed over the years that we spend, often we spend so much time fretting over stuff, fretting over things, complaining about things when we should be speaking life into our situation. Amen, somebody. Amen. So point number one, if you're taking notes today, is simply this. Your words have authority. They possess 
authority. It is undeniable. When you look at scripture, when I look even at, at experience in life, it makes a difference what you say. If you are speaking life as a child of God, there will be life. If you are speaking death as a child of God, there will be death. Amen, somebody. That's what the book of Proverbs said. The book of Proverbs says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. It is in the power of your tongue. It is in the power of my tongue. Amen? Some people are applying this principle, though, that I'm talking about, but they're doing it in reverse. They're doing it backwards. They're speaking the thing that they don't want to happen instead of the thing that they do want to happen. Let me give you an example. You ever heard anybody say something like, the rate that we're going, we'll never get out of debt. <laughs> or I, I love stuff like this. Well, I'm trusting God, but I think it's too late to turn my situation around. You are not talking in faith. If you say you are trusting God and then you immediately follow that up with a negative statement about what God is not able to do, do you realize what that must sound like to God? When you are telling God because He hears all things, He knows all things, when you are telling God what He is unable to do, do you think that moves Him by faith? I really do not think so. Jesus tells us to speak it, to believe it, and don't doubt it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor this morning and say, that's good preaching. I hope it ministers to you. Amen. Many times, though, we find ourselves, I'm just being transparent with you today. Many times, if we look closely, we find ourselves speaking negativity and speaking in a negative way. And then we wonder why God is not moving. And then we'll make statements, well, God, God hasn't done God hasn't dealt with this. Woe is me. Amen? Amen? If we are speaking those things, we're not lining up with the Word of God. We're not lining up with the will of God. We're not lining with the, up with the heart of God. We are not lining up with the principles of God that says if we will pray and if we will do that in faith, God will move. I, I wish somebody could get that today. If we would pray, if we would seek God and trust God in faith, God will move. Give him praise this morning in this place. I want to look at Luke chapter number 6 today. Luke chapter number 6 and verse number 45. It says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what? Good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. When stuff is coming out of your mouth that is no good, it's because it was first in your heart. So here's the question. Is our heart full of faith or is our, is our heart full of doubt? Amen. Amen. I want us to look at Mark chapter 11, verse 23 again for just a minute. Jesus said, for assuredly. Here again, look at the emphasis on the statement that he's about to make. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Now, when you think of a mountain, a mountain, we're not talking about a hill. We're talking about a mountain. How many of you have had or have mountains in your life today? You know what I'm talking about. You have faced a mountain before in your life. He says, he says, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, let me clarify something again for somebody this morning. I am not talking about magic. I am talking about faith in Almighty God, which is what Jesus said. He said, he said have faith in God. So we're not talking about this new age kind of stuff. No. We, first of all, we start with a relationship with God. 
When we have a relationship with God and when we've asked Jesus Christ to live in our heart, to be our Lord, not just our Savior, not just to forgive us of our sins, but we have asked Him to live and be Lord of our lives. When we have done that and we are children of God, we have authority in our words to speak life and to speak death, but we should always choose as children of God to speak life. Amen? Give God praise again, if you will. Now, I want you to notice with me, though, in Scripture that Jesus did not say, Mountain, you've towered over me for so many years. You've kept me defeated. You've caused me so much grief. I've endured so much pain because of you. That's not what he said. We are to speak faith into our situation. So many people get caught up in, in the bad going on. Let's get caught up in the good going on. Amen. His name is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. If you're praying for the problem rather than the, rather than the solution, you're praying in error. Did y'all get that? Two of you did. If you are praying for the problem, if you spend more time talking about the problem than you are talking about the solution that's in Christ, you are praying in error. That makes you all shout, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. The psalmist David said in Psalm 19, he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth, every one of them, not just the words of my mouth on Sunday morning, but the words of your mouth when the lines are long at Walmart. That never happens, Sister Ed, that never happens. But the words of your mouth, even when you have a flat tire, let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable before God in your sight, in your hearing. I think we sometimes need to clean up what we're sharing with God before it ever leaves our mouths and leaves our lips. Amen? You know, you may be a good person full of the Holy Ghost, but there are times that your words have you in bondage. Amen. Our words have that ability to bind us up, to put us into bondage. I, I would be so happy. I would be so happy just to go through a single day and never hear anything like, like the trash that I'm talking about today. Let's be positive. I'm not giving you some, here again, I'm not giving you some new age theology. I'm telling you what scripture says. The things that come out of our mouths make a difference. They either cause us to choose life or death. Amen. Some people, I know a lot of people, they would say, well, I'm full gospel, tongue talking, Bible toting kind of believer. But the things coming out of your mouth would say differently. Amen. Amen. I know that most people here would never admit this because you're, we're all too holy, but sometimes we just say, say things out of disgust, don't we? <laughs> oh, things are coming to my mind. Some things about y'all coming to my mind right now. I got to move on. <laughs> we get disgusted and we get aggravated with some things going on in life and then stuff starts coming out of our mouth. And it's coming out so fast, I, I sometimes I listen to people and I just want to help them gather it back in. But how many of you know once we speak it, we can't get it back? Once you talk about somebody and gossip about somebody, you can't get it back. Once you talk bad about somebody, you can't drag it back in. I mean, you try to catch it out here somewhere and you're trying to pull it in. Too late. Our words are snared by them. And there are times that they bind us up. There are times that they bind other people up also. Amen? Amen. How many of you ever get mad? 
How many of you ever get frustrated? <laughs> How many of you, to be honest, and say, I've slipped a couple of times and things come out of my mouth? A couple of times a day. <laughs> Haven't we all? I really don't think, though, that God puts his word on pause just for our tough times. I think his word remains true in the good times and the bad. In this world you shall have tribulation, but Jesus said that he'd come to overcome the world. So he's always overcoming. He's always doing. He's always bringing victory into our lives if we will allow him to do that. Amen? Amen. But I just really don't think that God puts his word on pause and says, well, wait, wait till Brother Jamie gets over today. And then we're going to put the word back into effect. No, don't comment, Sister Tina. Don't comment on that. <laughs> but once we have spoken something, we can never retrieve it. As much as we have wanted, probably every one of us in this place, unless it was a young child, probably every one of us in this building have been in a place where we said something, and oh, we wish we could have pulled it back in, but it's too late. Amen. Maybe it was in your, the attic of your house. Maybe it was in your car. Somebody pulled out in front of you. Whatever it was, we said something and we wish that we could have pulled it back in. But once we've spoken it, we cannot. God said that life and death are in the power of your tongue. Amen. I want to choose life today. Amen. You want to choose life, give God praise if you would. You know the way it is, though. We ponder on things sometimes. We ponder on negative stuff. Maybe I'm just, let me talk to this group over here. You know how it is sometimes we just ponder negative stuff? Anybody besides me ponder stuff? Yeah, they're not even listening over there. If you ponder negative stuff long enough, it's in your heart. And it'll come out your mouth. Your tongue will speak it. Amen. Now I want everybody to look at that side over there and say, he was preaching to you even though he was looking at us. <laughs> uh, let me give you a little revelation here. Three words. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. If you recognize, you know it happens in a moment. In an instant, and we recognize that we said something that we should not have said. When that happens, we should instantly feel conviction in our heart. Not because the preacher preached about it, because the Word of God said it. So we should clean it up. Amen. Clean up your thoughts, somebody. Amen. James chapter number one. I want you to go there for just a minute. He said, James said, but be doers of the Word. Not just hearers only. And then he said this. He said, deceiving yourselves. If you're just a hearer, and there are a lot of people who sit in church houses every week. There are a lot of people who listen to podcasts every week. A lot of people who watch TV every week. If you're only a hearer, if you only listen, but you never do, you're missing the point of what Jesus is trying to get us to do. Because we recognize there are mountains in our lives. There are things that come our way, and we need to be a doer, and we need to see those things cast away. Amen? Amen. Be doers of the word. Amen. Point three is simply this along those lines. Your words and your conduct. I'm preaching now, Brother Lindo. Your words and your conduct should reveal that you are a doer of the word. Amen. Amen. That you love God. That you care for God. That you worship God. <laughs> Can I go ahead and say it? When we're saying stuff and we're doing stuff that is not godly, and then we expect somebody to hear our witness, we're deceiving ourselves. Amen. People with faith do the word. Now listen to this. 
people without faith try the word. Is that right, Sister Debbie? People with faith do the word. What it says to do. People without faith try the word. A lot of people who sit in churches each week, they need to make up their mind whether they believe the word or not. Because if we believe it, we should do it. We need to be doers of the word. There's really no faith in trying. Following church today, my plan is I'm going to drive to a restaurant. I don't know where that's going to be, and I'm going to eat lunch. Wouldn't it sound silly for me to say, y'all, after church, I'm going to try to drive to a restaurant and eat lunch. No, I have every intention of driving to a restaurant and eating lunch. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. It would sound silly of me to tell you, though, well, I think after church I'm going to try to get there. No, I'm going to get there. One way or another, I'm going to get there. That would be like me saying, well, I'm going to try to pray for healing today. Where's the faith in that? I'm going to try to tithe today. Where's the faith in that? We do it. Am I right, Sister Debbie? I'm not preaching the word today. We do it. We don't just try it. Amen? People who are triers seldom find the faith to be doers. We can go through our entire lives trying stuff. Goodness. I'd rather be a doer, amen? I'd rather us all be doers. I'd rather the church of Jesus Christ be doers. I'd rather this nation know that in the church house today there are people who are doers and they're going to leave their churches today and they're going to be full of the Spirit of God and they're going to see God move in their lives. You're going to know there's something different about those people because they are doers of the Word, amen? I find that when Jesus spoke, He did it with boldness and He did it with authority because he believed what he was saying. You need to have this knowledge. I need to have this knowledge. We need to know what the book says. And once we know what the book says, it is ours to apply. Every principle, every precept, it is ours to apply by faith in our lives. Here again, first of all, you need to know God. You need to know Jesus Christ. You need to know the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. And you need to apply what the Word of God says we can apply. When Jesus spoke, though, in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he did it with authority because he believed and he trusted. If you're taking notes, I want you to write down one more thing today. Words, when they are coupled with faith as a child of God, they will produce a change. They will Sister Maxine, they will produce a change. Amen? Jesus was essentially saying that you and I can make very, very bold declarations. We're going to talk about authority a little more next week. But you and I can make very, very bold declarations when they're lined up with the Word of God. I'm not talking about some nutty stuff. When it's lined up with the Word of God... We can speak to our mountains, we can speak to our troubles, we can speak to our problems, and we can say things like, you are not going to hinder me anymore. Yeah. Don't start all this stuff, well, you've been giving me all this trouble, and oh, you've been, you've, been, you've been causing me all these issues in life. No, you will not hinder me anymore. I'm a child of God, I am walking in faith, I am going to overcome because Jesus has already paid the price for my victory. Amen. Amen. Jesus wants us to get to a place where our words produce positive things. Now, I said this a while ago. I'm going to say it again. I just feel prompted to clean it up. Clean it up. Amen. You want your faith to be developed. You have to discipline your tongue. Amen. Somebody. Let's make a decision today that our lives, when it comes to our lives, we're going to begin to speak life 
instead of all this other nonsense. Can we do that? Because your words have authority. Your words produce either life or death. Amen. Stand with me today if you would. If you want to make God happy, how many of you want to make God happy? Do y'all also want to make God happy? I know I've been preaching today to West Side Assembly most of the service. If you want to make God happy, let your words be pleasing to him. The words of your mouth and the stuff in your heart, the meditation of your heart, may it be acceptable in the sight of God. I want to read two more verses of scripture today. Sort of the promises of God. Found in the book of 2 Peter, chapter number 1, verse 3 says, As his divine power has given to us, it's a done deal, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God has given us so much. God, the greatest thing that God, I suppose, has ever given us has been forgiveness. Total, complete forgiveness from our sins. If we'll just ask. If we'll say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I know I've done things I should not have done. And when we simply come and say, God... I know it. I feel it. I feel your presence is convicting my life, convicting my, my heart and my body even right now. When we know that, and then we say, even from our lips, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. When we do that, Scripture says that he is faithful and he is just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He makes us new again. When you were a baby, when you were born, I know there's some little, little babies in here today, when, when a baby is born, they're just so, just so new. Isn't it neat? It's neat. They're just so new. They're so perfect. They're so innocent. God makes us new. We are a new creation in Him. So I would invite you today, here and online, to search your heart. And should there be anything found that is not pleasing to God, now is the time to say, God, would you forgive me? Today, I want us to pray together. I want you to bow your head. And if you're here today and, and you say, Pastor, I, I need forgiveness in my life. I need forgiveness. I know it. Can I see your hand right up and right back down? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else today? Thank you. Anybody else before we pray? For those listening and watching online, same to you. If you are there, just slip a hand up to heaven. God sees you. God knows your heart. If you recognize today your heart's not right with God, you really believe that you want to make it right today because someday eternity will affect us all in a great way. We will either go to heaven or we will go to hell. Those who have chosen Jesus Christ will have the most glorious time with our Savior. But if that's you and you say, I need forgiveness, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today 
recognizing my need. I need a Savior. I need forgiveness. For Lord, I have done things that I know are not right. And Lord, today, I turn from those things. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to make me whole and to make me right and to make me righteous through the shed blood of Jesus Christ who died on a cross for me and all who would believe. So Lord, today, I accept forgiveness. I accept Christ into my heart. And Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you for what you're going to do in my life. In the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? He is so good. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.